so this could be a problem. I'll go in the back. That's good. Right. Yeah. If you ask a lot of questions, that helps me. I think we can start now. Yes. Well, welcome to the Adirondack Museum. Uh, we are all members of the American Mountain Men. The American Mountain Men was founded in what year? In the 1960s. <laughs> As a survivalist group. And it was more modern survival, where you stored your goods in your basement, if you had a flood or a disaster, you'd be able to survive on the food that you had. As time went on, they felt the people who could survive the best with the least were the mountain men headed west to trap beaver. The um, association also became a historical organization where we try to be historically correct and also a brotherhood. I consider all these folks my brothers, and if you read our code, um, if, if politicians would follow some of that code, we'd have a great country right now, but unfortunately they don't. Your word is your honor. If he tells me something, I have to believe him, sometimes. <laughs> um, women cannot be members, but women can participate in any of our events. We don't always have a comfortable porcelain latrine like that down there. Sometimes we have that latrine out there. My wife loves to come, but because of the number of animals, she can't be here. Um, there is another group associated with a lot of the wives and girlfriends of AMM members called Women of the Fur Trade. They are a very hardcore, primitive group as we are, okay? Historically, our white woman in the mountains would not have been correct. Our sister Whitman and her husband were missionaries that entered the Rocky Mountains in the 1840s, okay? And the fear of beaver trapping just about dead in the 1840s for a couple reasons. One, the price of beaver went really way down. The second, silk hats became in vogue in Europe, so beaver hats were not in vogue. Any questions so far? Okay. Yes? You watch and do that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Um, where are they going to go? Uh, now. Swimming, yes. Swimming. Now you'll notice we're dressed a little bit differently. Harold here, who's the eye candy, he's the handsome one. He's dressed more as an eastern trapper, okay? Our organization allows you to dress as a trapper from the area, okay? So he's more of an eastern trapper. And to be honest, the trap, the trapping in this country really was very fluent in the 1600s. The Dutch sent thousands of furs back to Holland in the 1600s. Anyone know what the old name for Albany was in Dutch? Everywhere. Very good. Very good. Did you were you here before? <laughs> you here this morning? <laughs> I was here this morning. We don't want any No, we were chatting down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Beverwick. Beverwick. Yes. And that was basically Beaver Town. Okay. So the Dutch were in this long before. Our period is actually after the Lewis and Clark expedition to about 1840, okay? Now I'm dressed more as a western mountain man, because I choose to be. You know I live in the east, this is my choice. And actually, he was closer to civilization and stuff and could buy more linen and, and cloth material to make his outfit out of, okay? If I went west with cloth material, I was not a pedestrian, I was on a horse, so chances are, my bridge would have wore out. I would have had a contract with a Native American woman or make my clothes myself so I can continue on. Otherwise, you'd have a show. <laughs> Not a pretty one. <laughs> now, Harold's actually holding a rifle, okay? Um, earlier on, Ron threw me a couple stones. I have a smoothbore. Uh, with smoothbore, you could shoot whatever you could find out of the bore. You know, these were tools. They were not held in such high regard as we hold our modern weapons, okay? So I, it's a little more versatile, just like a modern shotgun. I can shoot a ball, shot, or nails, whatever I can find to use, okay? You notice Harold being close to the civilization as the expansive leather shoes. And all the rich people over here. I would not have been close to civilization, and when they wore out, I'd have to contract with a native person or make my own moxie, okay? Any questions so far? <coughs> okay. What the hell is that? I, I think it's church. 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 <laughs> Sorry, we got to go. <laughs> okay. Any questions at all so far? Okay.
Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to have four demonstrations here. We're going to have live firing. John. Our NRA certified instructors. So if they ask you to do something, you have to do it. Because otherwise we're going to have to leave. The safety is the utmost important. Now we're going to have primitive archery here, knife and tomahawk throw down there, and fire start at the very end. You're welcome to come back after the fire start and stop at any station light and move. Yeah, let's shoot a firearm and show you how to throw hawk and knife, hawk only, excuse me, and we'll go from there. Any questions? How do we fight a fire? Or start a fire. Start a fire? You're going to see. Start a fire? Start a fire. fire down there. We don't have a fire down there. But we have to rebuild. With your hands. You'll see. He's going to show you how All to right, start yeah, a fire. Yeah, we're going to show you that. Okay? <laughs> you can do that, yes, you can. That's the hard way, though. Any other questions? Okay. Without further ado, Ron. And if you can't understand him at any time, talk to me because he has this accent. One thing that'll happen is when we're going to have a, a, a hired hand here say fire in the hole before he gets ready to shoot. For some of you who didn't hear this before, when, when he says fire in the hole, cover up your ears because it, it is going to make a, a loud noise, especially the youngsters. All right, thank you. After we're going to have live round shooting, which is we're going to load powder patch and ball, and we are it is live round. Which uh, later after he said later on when you want to come back, we're going to let some of you folks shoot our firearms, and that's where the instructors come in, do as we say, or you know, we don't want nobody to get hurt. These are very touchy rifles; they're very expensive. That's kind of where it, that comes from. But right now we're going to show how to load one, and any questions you want to throw at me while I'm loading. Put the powder down. Use a measured, a measured device. Tree drilled and measured so I get the same amount every time. I get the same amount of powder. I've been chewing on a patch while Frank was talking. I use a stick patch and just a simple lead ball. This is a 54 caliber. Uh, the rifles all have names just like your modern guns from Remington and Savage and Winchester. These have early Virginia. They have you know Lancaster. They have Bedford County. Pretty much in the area where they were made. Now there's actually a quicker way to load. You put a loading block, and this is New York compliant. That's less than 10 pounds. <laughs> you, you could actually put this on top and drive it all down. It'd be much quicker. But that's a little bit more accurate, I think. That's a New York speed loader. And that's all there is to getting one loaded. When we get ready. We're going to add some little powder to the pan and going to fire with a piece of flint off a steel frizzer. Just a hardened piece of steel creates a spark. It ignites the pan, makes the gun go boom. Any questions on that? No. <coughs> we've got a shot after we shoot a couple of cans. We pop off a few things here. There's one shot down here with a popsicle stick tied to a number 10 can with a stick on the bottom of that. And underneath that, there's a foothold trap with a string tied to the trap. And the string is all the way up here. What we try to do, and I haven't done yet, but Mark and Dave have already done this weekend, cut the popsicle stick, drop the can on the trap, the trap springs, pulls the string, rings the bell, pours the shot. <laughs> I've, I've had that this cool. week, but oh, I'm going to try. We are probably going to get it someday. I'll say this, but where is it down there? I'm going to prime up now and get ready to shoot. Thank you. And I missed the balloon too. Take it out. No, I was shooting for the balloon. Yes, ma'am. We don't have to cover our hearing. You don't have to. How was your hearing? What? what? <laughs> For your safety, so we don't. It, it's not a, to me. It's not a loud crack, but I'm half deaf anyway. So it's 43 years of trucking. We, we, uh, we have open windows and a lot of this. And, but yet yeah, they ask you to. You know, if you want to plug your ears for the little ones yourself, that's up to you. I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's not a shot crack. It's, it's your own personal desire. You want to, you know, the hearing.
that makes you jump like that. <laughs> and, you, and you was watching him. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what happens. Especially for the, for the young ones, you know, our mom's concerned for their hearing and all that. That's, you know, just, we can't afford to give everybody their clothes. Okay. Are you wearing them? <laughs> he's old, he's deaf. Not a boy. They're going to try to take my shot at the string. That's the difference between using a spit patch and a spit that in one of these loading blocks that takes him an awful long time. Yeah, that's what they call buddy rivalry. The thing is, when the force goes out from Michael, it also comes to the side. You put, you put a little bit of powder in that pan, and when that hammer falls, it comes this way too. It shoots forward and to the right. We all have a tattoo somewhere on our face with pieces of powder. Oh, sure. Yeah. Expert shooters, pro shooters, or pro demonstrate. We just like to have fun, and we do miss. Yes, sir. For the Olympics, what would it would be? What? Uh, how many yards? Or what? What sort of? I don't know. I've never qualified for the Olympics. I've never, <laughs> never inquired about it. I'm probably not that good. I didn't even know what I hit. Do they have a black powder in the Olympics? They do. I didn't know that. Maybe I'll try out. Seven S powder in the pan. Seven, seven F powder in the pan. Seven F. Wow. What is that like? Firecracker powder? Wow. Not so good either. I hit the string anyway. Hey. I like the gun stuff. This one? Yeah. Actually, they're all pretty nice, aren't they? Yeah, that, that, you're right, that one is nice. It's like a cherry. Yeah, it looks like it. It's beautiful. Fire! 